Shall we start? Yeah, okay. Okay, so we had uh, discussed this at 25 degrees Celsius, KW value is this, at 80 degrees Celsius, KW value is 10 to the power minus 30. Okay, KW, since it is a function of equilibrium constant, okay, so it also depends upon temperature. As temperature increases, KW increases, decreases, KW decreases because this dissociation is endothermic in nature dissociation of water. Okay. Now you see, we have this relation. What is this? We have KW equals to, we have KW equals to concentration of H plus into concentration of OH minus. Okay. Depending upon the concentration of H plus and OH minus, we can say the solution is either neutral or acidic or basic. Okay. For example, you see, for neutral solution, what is the condition for neutral solution? The concentration of H plus should be equals to what? The concentration of OH minus now at 25 degrees Celsius. If I write down the concentration of H plus into the concentration of OH minus equals to 10 to the power minus 14, both are equal. So we can write the concentration of H plus square equals to 10 to the power minus 14. So concentration of H plus is what? 10 to the power minus 7. Understood this? Any doubt? Okay, so H plus concentration is this, and hence OH minus concentration is what? It is 10 to the power minus seven only. So pH is equals to what? pH is equals to minus log of H plus concentration. H plus concentration is 10 to the power minus seven. So pH equals to minus log of 10 to the power minus 7 and hence pH is what? So whenever we say pH equals to 7, right? So this 7 pH that we have, it is at, it is at what? It is at 25 degrees Celsius, which is understood, right? So it's not like the neutral solution will have pH value always at 7, right? It can be more or less depending upon what temperature you are taking here. Understood? Right. If you take 80 degrees Celsius, then H plus concentration would be what? 10 to the power minus 6.5. Is it? We have 13 over here, no? You need to solve this, you'll get H plus concentration and accordingly you'll find out pH over there. 10 to the power minus 13. So root over of 10 to the power minus 13, you need to solve. And then you will get H plus and OH minus concentration. So whenever we say pH for neutral solution is what? It's seven, it is understood we are talking about, at, we are talking at 25 degrees Celsius, right? It's not like we always have pH 7 for neutral solution. 
we have to take care of con temperature condition in that case okay this is one thing now if you talk about if you talk about acidic uh, solution so what is the condition of acidic solution if the solution is acidic then we can have this condition that the concentration of h plus should be more than the concentration of oh minus yeah and hence we can say the concentration of h plus should be more than 10 to the power minus 7 if i take minus log both side so minus log of h plus less than minus log of 10 to the power minus 7 minus log of h plus is ph less than 7 this is the condition of acidic solution that you have done in 9th and 10th grade that for acidic solution ph is less than 7 mathematical definition is derivation is this if ph is 7 then poh is what greater than 7 see like ph you can explain poh also POH is equals to minus log of OH minus concentration. Correct. Now you see for basic solution what we have. This is the condition we have. It means the OH minus concentration, or if I take in terms of H plus, it should be H plus concentration is less than 10 to the power minus seven. Okay. If you take minus of log both side, pH is greater than 7 and pOH is less than 7 for basic solution. Copy this down. That okay. So this is the three conditions we have for neutral, for acidic, for basic. What is the value of pH and pOH? Okay. Okay. Again, you see one more thing here at twenty-five degrees Celsius. We have uh, KW equals to 10 to the power minus 14. So PKW, if you calculate here, that would be 14 here minus log of KW. All the definitions are same. If you write on pH, POH, PKA, PKB for acid and base, we have same, we have similar formula for that. Okay. So we have this expression H plus concentration into OH minus concentration equals to 14. Sorry, 10 to the power minus 14. If you take minus of log both side, minus of log 10 to the power minus 14. We can also expand this 
by log formula log of h plus plus minus log of oh minus and this side we have 14 so minus log of h plus is ph minus log of oh minus is poh is equals to 14. So what we can write at, <coughs> at a given temperature, if pH increases, then POH decreases and vice versa. Because the PKW value is fixed. Yeah. Okay. Now tell me one thing here. You know, the dissociation of, uh, of water is endothermic. I'll write down this information here. Of water is endothermic, right? Okay. Now the question is, what happens if you increase the temperature? Means what happens to pH? What happens to pOH? If you decrease the temperature, same thing. What happens to pH and what happens to pOH? Could you think? First, you just tell me the answer for the first one. When temperature increases, then what happens? pH increases, decreases what? both decreases.
Yeah, so we know the reaction is endothermic and once you increase the temperature, the reaction will go in forward direction. So we have this reaction, you see, H2O H plus and OH minus. Tell me when the reaction goes in forward direction, the concentration of H plus increases or decreases. The concentration of H plus will increase and OH minus also increases, right? So this, when the concentration of H plus increases, pH will decrease because we have this, you know, relation concentration of H plus inversely proportional to pH, right? and concentration of OH minus inversely proportional to POH. Yeah. So both H plus and OH minus concentration is increasing. So pH will decrease and POH will also decrease. When temperature decreases, the reaction goes in backward direction, right? So pH and POH both increases concentration. Why can't we say this here that if pH decreases, because the sum is pH plus POH equals to 14. If pH decreases, then POH should increase. Is it possible? Tell me. Yeah. Can we say that since pH decreases, POH should increase, isn't it? Yeah, so answer for this question is that here the temperature is not constant, right? KW will also decrease as you change the temperature. The value of KW is fixed at a particular temperature, right? So this is the relation we have at 25 degrees Celsius. The same relation will hold true for this one, pH plus pOH equals to 13 at 80 degrees Celsius. You see the KW also decreases here, right? Hence, we cannot do by this way, right? If this is increases, this decreases because we are changing the temperature itself that leads to change in KW also, correct? So this is true as temperature increases, both pH and pOH decreases. As temperature decreases, pH and pOH increases, okay? Okay, we have one more um, relation here for acidity. Write down the heading, all of you. Acidity. Acidity is what? It is a tendency to give tendency to release H plus ion in the solution. More H plus, more will be the acidic, more acidic the compound will be, right? More H plus it gives, 
more acidic the compound it will be suppose we have a compound we have an acid ha and when this releases h plus we get a minus over here and h plus right so if you talk about the value of ka the equilibrium constant for this reaction a stands for acid equilibrium constant for this reaction for an acid it is concentration of h plus concentration of a minus divided by h a this is the relation we have okay k a is what k a is the dissociation constant constant for acid or we also call it as ionization constant for acid so you see what happens if ka increases again we have one condition if ka increases you can understand this ka as the equilibrium constant of an acid so once the ka increases we'll have forward reaction forward reaction means the concentration of h plus increases right concentration of h plus increases means what ph decreases concentration of h plus increases means ph decreases and acidity also increases more h plus you give more acidic the compound will be right hence the relation overall what we can write overall we can write overall we can write uh acidity is directly proportional to ka value because more ka more h plus more acidity ka value and inversely proportional to pka value is this fine yeah ka and pka are inversely proportional how do you define pka pka is equals to like we did ph minus log of k exactly same definition we have you must remember we have done goc and in goc we calculate acidity and basicity so sometimes they also ask you the order of ka the order of pka they won't ask you this acidity they won't write they will write order of what is the order of ka for this compound what is the order of pka so for all these kind of questions you need to first find out acidity only and then you can arrange accordingly okay done yeah next you see basicity basicity is the tendency to produce oh minus ion tendency to produce oh minus ion more oh minus ion more will be the basicity okay more oh minus ion more will be the basicity suppose we have a base and that is uh, boh this gives b plus oh minus 
and for base we'll write down kb b plus oh minus boh okay now kb is the same thing for base dissociation constant for base or ionization constant for base again we can write on the same relation here if kb increases forward reaction again concentration of oh minus will increase when concentration of oh minus increases basicity increases but poh decreases so overall what we can write overall we can write basicity is is inversely proportional to poh oh sorry inversely proportional to pkb i should write pkb and directly proportional to kb Done. Okay. All these relations, they can ask you anything, PKB, KB, anything they can ask you. Okay. Now, another term we have conjugate acid base pair. Have you heard this name? Conjugate acid base pair. Little bit, you remember we had discussed this in GOC, right? Conjugate base, conjugate acid, isn't it? Right? So all of you guys start revising GOC. That's why I have kept this in your came on next came on because uh, after this chapter, we will, we will be starting organic. So you must have the revision of GOC that we have done already. Okay. Must revise that. Okay. So uh, conjugate acid base pair. What is conjugate acid or conjugate base? Conjugate base. How do we get? Suppose you have an acid HA, right? And from this HA, if you remove H plus, you'll get A minus. So this A minus is the conjugate base, conjugate base of this acid. Means any acid, if you want to, uh, you know, write down the conjugate base of that acid, remove H plus from there, simply. For example, you see HCl. What is the conjugate base of HCl? Conjugate base of HCl. Cl minus, yes. What is the conjugate base of HNO3? Conjugate base of HNO3? Tell me, NO3 minus. What is the conjugate base of uh, HF? Conjugate base of HF? F minus conjugate base of uh, conjugate base of uh, we can write H two SO four. What is the conjugate base of this H two SO four? Remove one H plus. You'll be having H SO four minus. Conjugate base of HSO4 minus is 
SO4 2 minus. So simply you need to remove H plus from an acid. You'll get the conjugate base of that particular acid. Okay. Suppose you need to fi find out the conjugate acid. So this is the, this is suppose the conjugate base we have. Next is conjugate acid, suppose. Just opposite of it, conjugate acid, you need to add H plus on the compound, right? For example, if we have NH3, this is a base. So the conjugate acid of this base is add H plus on this. NH4 plus is the conjugate acid of this base. Suppose we have HCO3 minus, conjugate acid is what? Add H plus, H2CO3. Suppose we have uh, uh, HSO4 minus, conjugate acid would be H2SO4. Suppose we have OH minus, conjugate acid would be H2. So like this, we can find out the conjugate acid of a base or conjugate base of an acid. Is it clear? Yeah, done? Okay. Okay, so in a reaction, you can identify on this basis that which is the conjugate acid base pair. For example, Suppose if I write down HCl plus NH3 gives NH4 plus plus Cl minus. Could you tell me the conjugate acid base pair over here? What is the conjugate acid base pair here? Okay, so NH3 is the base and NH4 plus is the conjugate acid of this base. So this one is a conjugate acid base pair, right? HCl is the acid and Cl minus is the conjugate base of this acid, right? So this one is conjugate acid base pair. So you need to identify this, which is the conjugate acid base pair here. Because based on this, we are going to understand a concept here. And that concept is leveling effect. Okay, so before that, one order just to write down the heading here. That is the relative strength strength of acids. relative strength of acids. This order, just you copy this down. HClO4, HI, HBr, H2SO4, HCl, HClO3, HNO3, H3O plus, H2C2O4, H2SO3, HSO4 minus, HClO2, H3PO4, HF, H2CO3, HC2O4 minus CH3COOH, we have H2S, 
एच सी एल ओ एन एच फोर प्लस एच सी एन एच टू ओ टू एच टू ओ एन एच थ्री ओ एच माइनस डन Yes, guys. Finished. Tell me. Okay. So you don't have to memorize this. Okay. The best part of this is what you don't have to memorize the entire series, but at least the first line you should keep in mind. And all these, uh, you know, acids are basically strong acid. You can keep in mind easily. Is stronger than H three O plus. That is what you need to keep in mind. Okay. Now, based on this, we are going to understand one concept, and that concept is called the leveling effect. Write down the heading. the leveling effect okay what is leveling effect you see first of all we define this concept with respect to one particular solvent okay like suppose water you are taking or you are taking ammonia any solvent but with respect to the solvent we have this let me just write down few reactions you will understand with this uh, you know uh, examples we have suppose hclo4 plus H two O this gives this gives H three O plus plus C L O four minus. Okay. One more reaction you see H N O three. Plus H two O gives again uh, the conjugate acid of this H two O, which is H three O plus plus NO three minus H F plus H two O gives H three O plus 
plus F minus. Now we'll see this three reaction over here. Okay, so HClO4 is the acid, right? In fact, it is a strong acid. It is a strong acid. This is also strong acid. This one is not that strong, HF. HF is a weak acid. Okay, it's not that strong. So actually what happens, uh, you have suppose uh, a solution, water is present over here. So here suppose we have H2O, water and HClO4, acid you have put in. So actually what happens, both water and acid that you are putting in, listen, listen to me very carefully here, both water and HClO4, they have the tendency to release H plus ion in the solution like this. I'm just taking an example of uh, this acid that is HClO4. They have the tendency to release H plus in the ion. So both compete with each other. To furnish H plus ion in the solution, both will compete to each other. The one which is more powerful that will release H plus ion in the solution. And most of the H plus ion present in the solution is because of the stronger one. So which one is stronger? Which one is stronger? HClO4 or H2O? Obviously HClO4. So here what we say, once you put HClO4 in water, the H plus that you get here, it is mainly because of HClO4, not because of this water. Correct. So what happens in this reaction? HClO4 will release H plus, H2O will take H plus, forms H3O plus and ClO4 minus. Yeah, I said what? That we have H2O and HClO4, both have tendency to release H plus ion in the, correct? Release H plus ion in the solution. So the one which is more powerful, that will, you know, release H plus ion because both are competing with each other. It's like H2O is not that powerful, right? It cannot, you know, uh, dominate HClO4, right? But HClO4 can, right? So HClO4 dominates uh, this thing, uh, H2O, and HClO4 is the acid which furnish H plus ion into the solution mainly, okay? And we say, most of the H plus ion which is present in the solution, it is because of HClO4, it is not because of H2O. Is it clear? Yes, tell me. Yeah, so HClO4 will release H plus and H2O will take H plus. So this is an acid, this is behaving as a base forms H3O plus and this. So here you see, if you can understand here, it is a base and this is the conjugate acid of this base. And this is the conjugate base of this acid. Any doubt in this? Tell me. No doubt. Okay. Similarly, HNO3 is also a strong acid. So same logic we have here also. And if you look at that series, if you look at the series, HClO4 is stronger than H3O plus, isn't it? Look at that series and tell me, HClO4, is it stronger than H3O plus? Yes or no? Tell me guys first. Is it HClO4 is stronger even it is the strongest one? So hence from a strong acid to weak acid, it can go, the reaction can go. Hence this reaction goes in forward direction. If you look at the reaction, it has tendency to go in forward direction because it's forming weak acid. Similarly, HNO3 is also stronger than H3O plus. So this reaction also goes in forward direction. This reaction, if you think of, it is a weak acid, right? And if you look at the strength of H3O plus, 
HCO plus is stronger than HF. Look at that series and tell me, is it H3O plus is stronger than HF? Right? Hence, this reaction won't go in forward direction because a weak acid cannot form a stronger acid than itself in any reaction, right? So on the product side, we always have weaker acid than the acid which is there on the reactant side, okay? So this reaction is in backward direction. So this is one information or you can have with that series on the basis of the strength of strong acid or the acid which is there on the reactant side and the conjugate acid on the product side by comparing the strength of them. That is one thing. Now, the another thing is what? You see what happens here. Once you dissolve HClO4 in water, what acid you are getting? Could you answer? Once you dissolve HClO4 in water, what new acid you are getting? Yes, tell me. This reaction takes place between HClO4 and water, and we get a new acid that is H3O plus. Yes, these two reacts. And in the reaction, we don't have HClO4 present. It converts into H3O plus, correct? Yes, guys, all of you, tell me. It converts into H3O plus, yes? Yeah. Similarly, we have HNO3 also. It converts into H3O plus. So what is actually happening in the reaction? If you look at this, we have dissolved two different acids in water, but both converts into one common acid that is H3O plus. Yes. So the strength of H3O plus, whether you get it from HNO3 or from HClO4, the strength of H3O plus is same, will be no equal. Hence, we say what? That these two acid in aqua solution, their you know, strength becomes equal and that strength becomes equal to the strength of a new acid that forms, which is H3O plus, right? So this is what these two acids of different acidic strength comes back, comes to this equal strength of H3O, H3O plus. This we call it as the leveling effect because two different strength of an acid comes at the same level of acidic strength once it dissolves in water. So this we call it as the leveling effect of water. Two different acids, their strength become equal in aqueous solution, and that is equals to H3O plus. This is called the leveling effect of water. Did you understand this? Clear? So if you look, look at this series, the relative strength that I have given you. In this series, you take HClO4, you take HI, HBr, H2SO4, HCl till HNO3, till here. Whatever acid you take, you dissolve in water. Finally, what you will get? Finally, what you will get? When from HClO4 to HNO3, you dissolve in water. Finally, these acids converts into what? converts into H3O plus, it releases H plus ion. Water will take H plus from these acids and converts into H3O plus. Yes. Right. So what we say, the strength of all these acids from HClO4 to HNO3, the strength of all these acids becomes equal in water and that is equals to the strength of H3O plus. So since the strength becomes equal, it comes at the same level. So it is the leveling effect of the solvent that we are using, which is water. It is the leveling effect of water. Tell me, is it clear to all of you? Could you respond? You know, we have three different batches. I'll tell you one thing. 
um, one is uh, Kor Mangla 11th, right? Another one is Your Swatch, uh, Rajaji Nagar. And another one is YPR. And one more we have HSR. So HSR, Kor Mangla, YPR, and Arena. Four different 11th batches we have. In this, in your batch, the interaction is minimum, I would say, relatively, if you see. I can see from the beginning, only three, four of you are responding, not more than that. So with this one, like, you know, it reflects only two things. Either you are doing something else on the other side, okay, simply, you know, joining in the meeting and then you are doing something else, or you are not paying attention to the class. Because if you do not answer, if you do not respond, right, it means, you know, either you are getting everything or you're not, or you're not getting everything or anything, or you are simply not there on the other side. Okay. So if you do not respond, yeah, you can type in, like you can type in And it's not like I'm talking about only for this class. This is the overall experience I'm telling you. When I take the class of HSR and YPR, no, they talk more than me, which is also like, no, very much, but, uh, I'm not saying you people don't interact or you will don't, you know, study during the classes. But at least if you interact, it is a two way. If it is a two way communication, it will, it will be you know, better for you and me both. I will also understand, you know, properly what you are getting, what kind of uh, problem you are facing. Then I can, you know, change things accordingly. And if you uh, do not interact, it would, be, it would be very difficult for me. And I'm not going to suffer in the last. Okay, it's you. So keep that in mind. Okay. Whatever class you are having, like you are attending, whether it is, you know, chemistry, physics, maths, biology, you should interact. Right? So this, you understood, all of you? Correct? Leveling effect of water. One more thing you see here, uh, like I said in the beginning, that it, it depends upon the solvent that you are taking. So with respect to water, these acids will have equal strength and shows leveling effect. But when you take ammonia, what is the conjugate acid of ammonia? That is NH4 plus. Means what? From HClO4 to HClO, all these acids, if you dissolve in ammonia, their strength becomes equal in ammonia. And that strength is equal to the strength of NH4 plus. And this we call it as the leveling effect of ammonia. I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you Shraddha once again, okay? So I just said what? That from HClO4 to HClO, all these acids, if you dissolve in ammonia, finally, all these acids will give NH4 plus. And we say the strength of these acids becomes equal to the strength of NH4 plus, right? That is the leveling effect of ammonia. I have just given this bracket over here, uh, not required, means, from HClO4 to HNO3, if all these compounds you dissolve in water, finally you will get H3O plus. Means HClO4 converts into H3O plus. HI converts into H3O plus HBr, H3O plus H2SO4, H3O plus HClO3, H3O plus. So whatever acid you put in water from this to this, finally you will have H3O plus as an acid in the solution. So what we say, HClO4 converts into H3O plus. So it's strength equals to the strength of H3O plus in aqueous solution. HI converts into H3O plus. So strength of HI equals to the strength of H3O plus in aqueous solution. H2SO4 converts into H3O plus. So strength of H2SO4 equals to the strength of H3O plus in aqueous solution. So finally, what we can say, all these acids becomes like have got the equal strength in aqua solution and this we this we call it as what the leveling effect of water because their strength comes at the same level they become equal acidic right that is what the leveling effect of water sometimes they ask you this question why hi and hclo4 having equal strength in water but not hf hf ka strength is different why because hf cannot produce h3o plus Right, HF cannot produce H3O plus because the HF is a weaker acid than H3O plus. So one which is weak cannot produce 
a stronger acid than itself in any reaction. It is always from a strong acid to weak acid, a stronger to weaker, always. So since HF cannot produce H3O plus in aqueous solution, that's why it, the reaction is backward and the strength of HF is different in water than the strength of HI or HClO4 in water. Got it, understood? The question is sometimes they say the strength of HClO4 and HI is equal in water, but the strength of HF is not equal to the strength of HI or to the strength of HClO4, for example, right? So what is the reason for that? They can give you four options on this. They can ask you in also one liner in your, in your school exam. They explain this, why this happens. Because H2O plus is stronger acid than HF, HF cannot form H2O plus, but HI can. HClO4 can. Hence the answer is. Yes, understood this? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, guys, next class onwards, I'll tell you what we need to do. We have discussed about acid and base now. Like I said, the entire chapter is all about acid, base, and pH. So, we'll be starting next class pH calculation. So we have different, different cases under which we need to find out pH, okay? So what we need to do, I'll tell you, you just have to focus on one small formula of pH, which is pH is equals to minus log of H plus. So our entire objective is to find out H plus concentration, whatever the condition is. If you find out total H plus concentration, substitute it here, calculate this, you'll get pH value, okay? So for pH value calculation, some log value you must memorize. Okay, sometimes in the exam, they won't give you log values. Okay, so few log values you should know. For example, we have log two. Log two value is 0 0.30 approximately. We'll take exact value is this. I'll write down the exact value first. 0 0.47 log five, log five is 0 0.6989, log, log two, three, five, you must remember, if you keep this log seven also in mind, that would be better. But first three is must, okay? For approximation, we take this as 0 0.30, this one approximately will take 0 0.48, this one approximately will take 0 0.70, approximately, and this one is 0.84 only, there's no approximation for this. Okay. One well, last thing, with the help of this, this is a homework. You can do this. With the help of this, a pH is given, that is 2.1 and you cannot take help of calculator. Okay, you have to show your working also. Uh, I want to see how, you know, do you do this? Obviously with calculator you can do, but you cannot use that. Okay, so 2.1 we have pH. What is H plus concentration here? This is what you need to find out. So try this and you can share your, your answer with me. No, you cannot use that. You can do this calculation with the help of these values. Okay, try that, use some mathematics. Okay, directly you can do it. Okay, you don't have to use anything else. Okay, try this and once you are done, you got the answer, share your answer with working, the entire thing with me. Okay, fine. So next class we'll start with pH calculation. Okay, I will share one DPP on you with you on this okay that is acid base right okay guys see you next class take care bye bye